Bob Reese, head coach of the Valley Huskers, taking some time to join me now ahead of the final week of the VCFC regular season. And as we do every uh, time, Bob, I want to look back before we look ahead. Uh, another win against the West Shore Rebels for your group. Uh, what did you see from your club? Uh, was it a better performance than the last one over the Rebels? Kind of the same routine. What did you see? Uh, I mean, I, I saw a re very resilient group, you know, uh, West Shore came out and, and, and gave us everything they had. They, they scored on us, um, you know, early and, and, and we answered right back. And that was sort of the theme of the night for us. Uh, you know, we had three special teams touchdowns, which were huge, um, you know, for, for us to get that win. And uh, that was just kind of the, the, the day. It was, you know, they scored and we answered and we'd find a way. So. Um, I don't think it was our prettiest game offensively. Um, you know, defensively, I thought we played pretty well, but, um, you know, busted at times and, and, and you gave up points here and there. But we, we answered, and special teams was, was certainly a good way to do that. I've, uh, I've been around teams where special teams was kind of an afterthought. You know, you always went through the motions at the end of practice, but guys weren't really paying attention. And you, I don't know if in my junior days we ever broke down special teams film, and that wasn't something we put much attention into. But I've seen some really great special teams plays from your group, especially uh, the last few weeks. Talk about the, the importance of that part of the game and how much you guys pay attention and approach it. Uh, I mean, special teams is huge, especially, um, you know, in three down football, <laughs> you're, you're kicking a lot or the other team's kicking a lot, um, you know, and you need to, to game plan for what they're doing and, and have a good game plan uh, to take advantages in certain ways. And, um, obviously, in junior football, there's not, um, you know, as much meeting time maybe as, as you always want. But certainly as a coaching staff, we break down film and, um, you know, and then in our meetings, we prepare our guys the best that we can. And, and we try to put something in uh, for each team, uh, you know, based on the stuff we've seen and with, with what they do. So um, to me, special teams is huge, you know, and I have a lot of background in that. And um, it, it's a huge part of the game. We spend a lot of time on it. Do you think that's maybe a spot where you can almost pick up a, a little advantage over teams? Because I, I don't know that every team does uh, focus and, and put that work into it. Is that a spot where you can maybe grab a little inch in the game by having, like you said, some special stuff in for each team and being really uh, prepared mentally for that? Uh, I mean, certainly that's the goal is to try to catch teams. But, um, you know, on the flip side of that, too, we've been caught, you know, against some pretty big special teams plays ourselves this year. We've had a few punts blocked. Um, you know, and we've got caught on a couple of fakes. So, um, you know, I think teams out there preparing, um, you know, maybe more than you're giving them credit for. Uh, but, but certainly special teams is a huge part of, uh, of the Canadian game and it's a big part of our focus. Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, preparation has changed a little bit since, uh, well, 15 years ago now anyways, right? <laughs> so um, I want to talk about the all-star selections. Um, there was, uh, man, I don't know if you watched my interview yet with, uh, with Coach uh, Shane and uh, Ben, um, but Shane Beattie was not very happy that the Rebels were shut out. Some coaches love to get into it. Some coaches kind of don't pay any attention. What was your reaction to the all-star selections and, uh, and the Huskers on the list? Um, I mean, certainly to the Huskers on the list, we're very proud of our guys, um, you know, and, and very well-deserving, I think, in all four instances. Um, you know, and, and hey, listen, I think everybody has a – as an argument for, for maybe getting a few more of their guys on. But uh, certainly Shane's got, uh, you know, he's, he's entitled to his opinion and probably rightfully so to, to get none um, for a very talented and, and, and very athletic, um, you know, team was, was shocking to myself. I thought for sure they had some guys that uh, um, could have been an all-star worthy. But again, you look at the list and, you know, like, it's tough to take guys off of that as well. I think everybody that got, you know, nominated and selected, uh, very well deserving. So, you know, certainly coach out there as a, you know, has a, as a very valid argument. Um, Shane Beattie was one guy too, who couldn't stop raving about uh, your quarterback there, Julian Whittink, uh, you know, said he was one of the toughest players he's seen uh, in his time, just kept getting up, kept fighting out there. And um, I mean, is that an attitude that you see sort of just spreading throughout your team? I mean, when your star quarterback fights through like that, uh, that's contagious. <laughs> Certainly it is. Uh, contagious is exactly the word I would use for it. Um, you know, Ju Julian's a heck of a leader, man. And, and 
he leads by doing those things by by getting up and, and fighting and continuing to be a warrior and the kid uh he is one of the toughest kids i've ever seen you know absolutely and that's his approach to practice he doesn't take anything out uh or off during the week at practice and uh he's a shining example to the rest of our team and it's it has been contagious in the way that some of our guys um, you know, are now up in the, the way they prepare and, and, and using Julian as an example. So um, having Julian on our team this year has is, is obviously been outstanding uh, for us, and, and he's a heck of a quarterback and a great kid. Um, if you had to uh, – and, and this is a tough question for you, Bob. If you had to pick one, is it, uh, is it Dick or is it Poulet? Which one do you go with Who's if you're starting a team? <laughs> you got both, so you're lucky, I guess. Right? I got both. I got both, so, I, you know – I'm going to leave my answer at that. You know, I, I've already gone down that road and, and I got both. So um, <laughs> both outstanding players, you know, in, in, in very different ways at times. Um, but I mean, outstanding athletes, both of them and, and great players on our team. So the VI Raiders up this weekend, a lot on the line for your group. There's some of it you control, some of it you don't. Talk about the mindset, the approach this weekend. Uh, control, you can control, you know, and that's been our mindset all year. You know, our approach has been uh, to grow this road that we've been on as far as we can go, you know, and, and, and we accomplished one of our goals last week, which was to lock down a playoff spot. Um, you know, certainly there's still playoff implications and seeding on the line and, uh, you know, and a chance to, to go 2-0 and against a very good opponent. So uh, we've been preparing for this game, um, you know, to, to finish off kind of what we started in the regular season and to, to be the best that we can be. You know, and we certainly know the VI is um, going to be fighting for, for playoff seeding as well. This is a big game, you know, and, and we're hoping to maybe get a play or a home playoff game out of it if we can come over here with a win. So uh, there's a lot on the line for us. There's a lot on the line for them. That's a very good football team over there, a team that we have a lot of respect for. And I'm um, certainly looking forward to a very good matchup. Caledonia Park is a unique stadium, especially this time of year. You've been there, uh, I guess, once as a head coach now. Um, anything that you learned, anything you'll make sure you make your guys aware and prepared for? Uh, I mean, we talk about certainly the, the field is different than what we practice on and what we play on. Um, you know, it's the same speech we have before we go to Okanagan. Uh, you know, don't. Don't let a different playing surface be an excuse for you. It's not. It, uh, it is there. You know, they're not putting turf in for us this week. So uh, be prepared for it. It's not an excuse. You need to be prepared for, for what we go into. And uh, certainly it's a park that comes with some energy, and we talk about that. And, um, you know, we try to prepare our guys for the ferry ride and, and being as prepared as we can. So we talk about that and we continue to talk about that. But uh, our mindset is to go in there and win a football game. You know, we have a, a very important football game on the line and, you know, we're not really worried about grass or, or what, you know, the ferry ride. We're worried about going over there and handling our business, and, you know, looking forward to moving on to the playoffs. Don't eat the eggs. That's my only advice on that ferry ride, man. Don't do Never. it. Never eat those <laughs> eggs. Never. Bob, I appreciate this as always. I look forward to chatting with you uh, in person on Saturday and uh, it's going to be a fun game. Great. Looking forward to it, Don. Take care. Thanks.